you know, I'm doing this because there's been a lot of people online that say that I'm being kind of like, I give you all the bad jobs. But I want you to see I'm doing all the work this time. This okay? is sweet. Thanks, okay. Steve. You're doing a good job. Okay, here we go. I think a puppet. Okay, I didn't ready? ask you to ask any questions. I just said watch. All right. So here, look at this. See the bottle? A lot of air put inside. Three, two, one, release it. <laughs> Bam! Sweet. That's a cloud in a bottle. And ask me how I did it. How'd you do it? So I'll tell you in about 30 seconds after you watch this. I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. All right, if you look at a book, how to do a classic cloud in a bottle, they say that you need to have bottled water. Um, most important thing, believe it or not, smoke. And in order to have smoke, you need to have the matches. So let me show you the classic way that they say to do this. So first thing you need to do is get a match. All right, ah, here's one. All right, perfect. And what you do is you light the match like this and allow it to burn. And then we're going to capture the smoke inside as much as we can. So here we go. Good. See this? We're capturing the smoke inside. That's perfect. That's what we need. Now in just a second it's going to dissipate and this is not the cloud. It's just some smoke that's inside. So to that I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Not much. Good. So there it is. Cap it all off once again. And now the object is to get the water to evaporate. See, in order to make a cloud, the science is pretty simple. The water has to evaporate, but then it has to condense on something. And believe it or not, a cloud in the air, those um, little uh, molecules of water want to condense on something, and many times that's a little piece of pollution. It could be uh, smoke, it could be particles that are in the air. But that's why mom always said never eat, drink the rain like this, because it's dirty, right? It may not seem like it is, but all those droplets had to condensate on something. So here, uh, is our our water. We're hoping that it's evaporating and now we're going to go through a pressure change. Ready? So I'm going to squeeze it and we're going to introduce high pressure. So ready? When I squeeze it here like this, I'm trying to increase the pressure, increase the temperature just a little bit. And now when I release, that's supposed to be the cloud. Did you see it? That's the cloud. Ready? Cloud, no cloud, cloud. Wait, high pressure, right? Condensation happens when you have Low pressure. Can you see why for years I hated the cloud in the bottle demonstration? That's not a cloud, it's, I don't know what that is. You need a big thick cloud. In order to do that, we gotta pull in the heavy equipment, a bike pump. Now for my version of the cloud in the bottle, you do not need matches. No matches needed for that, right? In fact, all you need is a bottle, you need a bike pump, your safety glasses, and the secret ingredient, rubbing alcohol. And now you know why we don't need the matches. See, the matches and the rubbing alcohol do not mix. In this particular case, for demonstration purposes, I wanted to find something that would evaporate just a little bit quicker than water. And uh, because the, the cloud, we didn't get a good cloud with just the water and those particles. So, unfortunately, this version here doesn't take into account that there's particles that are in the bottle. But that's okay, because we want it to evaporate, and I want, I'm sacrificing that for a better cloud. So, regular rubbing alcohol like you'd find at the store, 70% is fantastic, and a little bit inside, you don't need much at all. This goes off to the side, safety glasses go on, and now we're going to see if we can get that to evaporate. So there's a little bit of water in here before, but really you can do it with a completely empty bottle and a little bit of the rubbing alcohol. That's perfect. All I'm trying to do is to get some evaporation inside. Second thing, bike pump. Now, you're going to have to make one tiny mod modification, and that's the end of the bike pump. It looks a little strange, and that's because it's a homemade piece that fits perfectly in the bottle. Really is pretty simple. This centerpiece that you see right here is just a tire stem. So if you go to a store like uh, uh, some sort of car store, that kind of thing, this is just a tire stem. 
And uh, the tire stem had to have a little base that was bigger so it would fit in the bottle like this. And so that's why I used this rubber stopper. You could, in a kind of a crude way, just take duct tape and wrap it around until it fits in. I like something a little bit better, and so if you can find a stopper, or you can find something that will fit into the bottle much better, it's just gonna make the demonstration that much better because ultimately you're holding it here like this and then at the right time, popping it back off again to release all the pressure. All right, we're almost there. T tire stem that you just made goes onto the end of the foot pump. That clamps in place. Safety glass is on for this one. This goes into the top. Now we're ready to go. You have to hold this in place because as you add pressure, it's gonna wanna pump off, uh, pop off. And so let me add some pressure. And I'm gonna watch pretty carefully because I don't wanna put too much pressure inside. About 15 to 20 pumps at the absolute most, but you can experiment with this. Immediately as I'm adding air, it has to go someplace. And this is getting really, really solid. So let me continue to add pressure. Mm, I think this is just about right. Now we're gonna go from a high state of pressure to a low state of pressure. When we do so, we're gonna get condensation. Watch, three, two, one. And that's a really cool cloud in a bottle. But before all of this condensation, the cloud goes away, immediately cap it back off again, because now watch, what a great example. This is a cloud in the morning. Let's just say it's fog, and they say the fog burns off. Well, really, there's a pressure change, right? So we're going from a state of lower pressure, watch this, to a state of higher pressure. And look at this, in doing so, watch, the cloud vanishes. Ah, I feel a repeat coming on, right? So we're increasing the pressure. We have condensation gonna happen as soon as we go to a low state of pressure. I can feel the bottle getting just a little bit warmer. This is good, watch this. Three, two, one. And there you have, I think, the ultimate cloud in a bottle. You know, all this talk of clouds makes me think about clouds and how they look. Big city clouds sometimes look a little bit different than, I don't know, clouds out in the country somewhere. And if you notice in a big city, many times in right there at the end of the winter, kind of coming into the spring, you get this brown cloud effect, right? You get this layer of haze that kind of sits right there. It's almost like it's trapped right over the city. And in fact, it is. In order to understand the science of that cloud, you need to understand something about the science of temperature inversion. The materials are pretty simple. All you have to have uh, are some juice bottles and some food coloring, hot and cold water, card, pretty simple stuff. But the labeling might be fairly important. So if you take a look down here, notice that this one here says cold and this one's hot. You'll notice that these on the other side are upside down and it's for a reason because in just a second, we're gonna put hot water and cold water in and we're gonna actually turn it upside down and put it in place and then pull the card out of the way and see what happens between the two layers. So in order to determine and differentiate color-wise between hot and cold, let's use a couple drops of food coloring to represent the cold over here. And it looks like we've got cold over here with blue and let's use this over here for our hot. Yellow will be for the hot and that's what we need here. And now, just fill the bottles up with water. Now, when we say cold water, this is just purely out of the faucet, so it's nothing special that you have to kind of carry around with you or anything like that. So this, right to the very top, will be our cold water. And the warm water is, again, just out of the faucet, really as warm as I can get it out of the faucet. Should be perfect. And it's important in this particular case to take it to the very top, all right? Perfect, there's our cold, now for our warm. Now you can pick any color you want as you're trying to do the separation, but in this particular case, I wanted to see what would happen when the two mix, and so of course blue and yellow will give us green right to the very top, and so that's the layer that I really am looking for. It's kind of easy to be able to see. Now you don't have to use bottles that are this big, you could use smaller bottles like uh, a frappuccino bottle, for example, or a smaller juice bottle. But in this particular case, it's easy for the demonstration to be able to, uh, to see it at this size. Last thing, some playing cards. So the playing card will go on top, we'll turn the whole thing upside down and make a prediction. So now watch, I'm gonna turn it upside down like this. And now watch, the cold goes on the bottom, the hot is on the top, and now, the prediction is what's gonna happen when you pull the card out between the two layers. Remember, a huge opening right there. Take a look at this. I'm assuming you've made your prediction. Bingo. Look at this. The hot stays at the top, 
and the cold stays at the bottom. There's no mixing of the gases at all, right? the, the liquids in this particular case, but we're going to use them to represent gases. All right, so now let's do the opposite over here. Let's put the cold on the top and the hot on the bottom, and now pull them out of the way and watch what happens. See, within seconds, you can see what's happening here. Look at this. We get this beautiful mixing starting to go on here, right? That hot rises up here, mixes with the cold. The cold heavier falls down. And we get this beautiful mixing up and down, whereas this part over here, no mixing at all. What does this say to us? It's this. The sun beats down on the earth, right? It heats the earth, and that hot air, or that, that earth, that hot air rises. And you want that to be able to take the pollution that's in the air that's close to the earth and send it up higher into the atmosphere. This is one of the reasons why people talk about being able to drive when it's still light. And, and one of the reasons when, and nowadays, for daylight savings, you know, it used to be a long time ago because of farming, but really a pretty good, um, uh, uh, environmentally friendly idea here to be able to drive when the sun is still out because you really get this mixing going on and take a look at this the both bottles completely mixed in under 30 seconds whereas this here see that layer that you hit right there see that green part that's the temperature inversion layer right this colder air is being trapped by the warmer air and that layer of pollution so to speak right there tr is trapped and that's why in these big cities you have that brown cloud Higginsworth, you did a good job, got the, the water here, so now we're just gonna make it bigger, right? And in this particular case, I want you to be able to see that cloud layer in between, so look at this, it's called a split demo tank. It looks like this, see how it's very, very thin? It's actually split with this piece of plastic right here. So we can kind of put, like in your particular case when you're playing, you could put whales over here and giraffes over here, and then go, go like this, and then the two would mix. And you could, but in our particular case, since we're doing real science, you're going to put warm water on this side, and I'm going to put cold water on this side. Got it? Got it. Got it. All right. So the trick here is kind of we pour at the same time. So even if there's a little leakage, believe it or not, there's good pressure on either side, and it okay. holds it in place. Ready? All right. So I've got cold over here. The blue is the cold. The warm is the yellow. Bingo. Got it? So now the trick is to slowly release it and kind of watch what happens here. Watch this. So you lift up slowly, and allow that to start to work its way in. There it is. Oh, cool. Isn't that nice? Look at this. So you get this beautiful wave that comes over and crashes on this side and works its way back. But look at this layer of green that you see there. And when it all settles down, you really will see that blue sitting here on the bottom that represents the colder air closest to the earth in the winter months, for example, and that warmer air that's above that's trapped in the, uh, the cold air. So this is the temperature inversion. And it's no wonder that things like carbon monoxide and other pollution gets trapped here in this particular layer. It just can't mix with any of the higher atmosphere. Another reason why they're putting uh, MTBE in our gasoline is trying to make it burn just a little bit cleaner during these months, not so much in the summertime, because in the summertime, Earth is warmer, we're driving when it's still sunny outside, and you're starting to, uh, to, to get that movement back and forth. But this is a great example of temperature inversion. Very cool. Nice show today. You did a great job. Steve. What are you doing? I'm approving comments right now. Yep. A lot of them are just saying that you're being too mean to me. They're saying I'm being mean to you? Yeah. I'm not being mean to you. Whoa. Am I being mean to you? No. Am I being mean to you? Not at all. No. And I'm not, yeah. am I? Because who's your buddy? I'm your buddy, You're right? buddy. Who's your little buddy? <laughs> I am. I'm not being mean to you, right? Not at all. Am I being mean to you? <laughs> not one bit. See, no. You're the nicest person I've ever Correct. met. Correct. So am I being mean? No. No. That's it. That's why I'm going to take this and go take a look at some things while you dump this out, all right? You really have some weird bookmarks here. If the company finds this, you're going to be in trouble. All right. That's a lot. Be careful, careful, careful. Hey, shoes are rented. We'll just be over here kind of checking out some of your bookmarks. Sweet. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. <laughs>